In an instant, foreign policy is back in the headlines. It started when an anti-Islam amateur film mocking the Prophet Muhammad went viral in the Middle East. It sparked protests in Egypt, where a perimeter wall of the U.S. Embassy near Tahrir Square was scaled. This after roadblocks were recently removed. They then replaced the American flag with an Islamic one. The government issued an obligatory-sounding condemnation of the riot, and the Muslim Brotherhood, which backs the new Egyptian president, is now calling for much larger nationwide protests on Friday. Also Tuesday, rioters stormed the U.S consulate in Benghazi, Libya, with rocket-propelled grenades. They overpowered guards and set the complex on fire. U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans were killed trying to get to safety. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton pointed out some Libyans did fight with the Americans, led others to safety, and carried the ambassador's body to the hospital. But she, the president, and Mitt Romney have all strongly condemned the attacks. This is an attack that should shock the conscience of people of all faiths around the world. This was an attack by a small and savage group, not the people or government of Libya. But let me be clear, there is no justification for this, none. Violence like this is no way to honor religion or faith. The world must stand together to unequivocally reject these brutal acts. These four Americans stood up for freedom and human dignity. We will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act. And make no mistake, justice will be done. This uh, attack on American individuals and embassies is outrageous. It's disgusting. It, uh, it breaks the hearts of all of us. We cannot hesitate to use our influence in the region to support those who share our values and our interests. Now, all of this has sparked a political firestorm between the two presidential campaigns. We're going to have more on that later in the show. As we talk now, though, 200 additional Marines who specialize in anti-terrorism security are on their way to the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli. The military is considering sending similar troops to other embassies across the region. And the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan is asking Afghan officials for help maintaining calm over this video. Here at home, flags of the U.S. Capitol are now at half-staff in honor of Ambassador Chris Stevens. NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel is on the ground in Cairo. He just filed this report for us. As details emerge on the two attacks on U.S. diplomatic facilities, it's clear that the ones in Cairo have certainly a more spontaneous feeling. Here, demonstrators rose up. They were agitated. They were infuriated that a Internet video had been posted online, even though it had been posted online some time ago, ridiculing Islam, ridiculing its prophet Muhammad. Those demonstrators went to the U.S. Embassy, they scaled the wall, they pulled down a flag, they didn't hurt anybody inside. In Benghazi, the more we learn about it, the less like that it seems. It was a commando-style raid in Benghazi where militants, they may have been angry about this uh, same video, but they clearly moved in with a military-style tactic. They had RPGs. They had heavy machine guns. The, the attack on the consulate was carried out in two waves. That's not the kind of spontaneous mob activity like we saw here in Cairo. That's the kind of thing in Benghazi that's carried out by a militant group, by a terrorist group, by al-Qaeda potentially, and U.S. officials are looking into that right now. Also wondering, was it just a coincidence that the U.S. ambassador, who's normally based in Tripoli, happened to be in Benghazi at the very time of the attack? So a lot of questions, but it's, uh, it's clear now that these were two very different incidents, a spontaneous uprising that resulted in no casualties here in Cairo and a guerrilla assault in Benghazi that killed the U.S. ambassador. All right, here with us now is former U.S. Ambassador Mark Ginsburg. He was a Mideast advisor to President Carter. He was also the ambassador to Morocco. Um, Mark, I want to start with the response yesterday from the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. Um, what the, embassy, the statement the embassy put out has taken a, a lot of heat politically here in the U.S. and, and caused a lot of uh, uh, controversy. In part, it reads that the embassy of the United States in Cairo condemns the continuing efforts by misguided individuals to hurt the religious feelings of Muslims as we condemn efforts to offend believers of all regions. 
victims. Now, as I look at the context of this, this was early in the day. This was before the actual attacks had begun. This is before, obviously, any American fatalities. It seems to me like a reasonable statement of people trying to keep the peace and, and prevent an attack on their embassy. Do you think there was anything out of line about this statement, or do you think this was a reasonable thing for an embassy in Cairo to be doing? This was an absolutely reasonable thing for the embassy in Cairo to be doing politics in the United States notwithstanding. I would have issued or had authorized my public affairs staff to issue a similar statement for what essentially was uh, a demonstration and try to calm things when, without knowledge, of course, how this violence was going to break out in next door Libya. Now, listen, I can't put myself in the shoes of the ambassador in, in Egypt. I don't know exactly what uh, she knew or didn't know at the time when this statement was issued. The fact of the matter is, is that there's obviously some question over whether or not it was cleared with Washington at the State Department. But listen, the fact of the matter is, at the time, it was a reasonable statement. Uh, Ambassador, what do you make of the, the news that Egyptian police abandoned their posts and allowed the mob to do what they wanted to do there? Does this perhaps suggest that this is tacitly sanctioned on a much higher level? I am deeply concerned about seeing the replication of President Morsi's willingness to play politics with the United States and other foreign governments while he tries to play his own game of politics with the Muslim Brotherhood and as well as with the extremist Salafist allies of his. Just a few months ago, uh, a mob attacked the Israeli embassy in Cairo and required President Obama to intervene with Mr. Morsi directly. The fact is, the United States uh, embassy knew that there were some demonstration that was going to be likely around the embassy. The fact that the police were somehow ordered to uh, vacate the premises, uh, shall I say, and I'm going to say this as politely as I can, was patently unacceptable on the part of Mr. Morsi's government and frankly deserves to be sanctioned by the United States. Ambassador Ginsburg, I, I, in your statement that uh, it was a um, realistic response or uh, a reasonable response on the the part of the embassy in Cairo. I'm just wondering to get your take why you think the Obama administration then walked it back and said this was not the shared belief of uh, the president. 